city so late. Now this is one of Haiti's poorest and most dangerous slums. In fact, about a year and a half ago, I never would have been able to get out of our van to walk around here. However, the UN has come out here and they've cleaned things up a little bit so it's a little safer during the day. But one thing that's very evident out here is the absolute poverty. Take a look at this. This is the kind of a house most people here live in. You can see it's just kind of crafted together with pieces of metal they just found on the street. inside one of Haiti's few public schools. As you can see, this classroom is just bare bones here with old benches and a chalkboard. Now, some people estimate almost 80% of Haiti's kids do not attend school on a regular basis. So for many parents, it's a dream to have their children get an education. And that's why many of these poor families give their kids away to stay with other families, because those families promise they're going to send the kids to the classroom. Yet many of those families turn the kids into rest of X. They never step foot in these classrooms and instead spend their days out in the streets working. We've been, you know, walking around these streets. We found some kids that are just half clothed or completely naked, like this little boy here. And you can see right now he's not wearing any shoes. He doesn't own any, and he's forced to walk around on this ground that is so hot. If I even put my hand down here, it hurts. I instantly have to take my hand off this ground. It feels just like a hot stove. Almost no families in Haiti have running water. In fact, it's just something that's a luxury for rich families. So the families that do own child slaves force them to come out to these watering areas and fill up buckets with water. And some of these buckets weigh up to 64 pounds when they're filled with water. And a lot of these child slaves are just little girls like this one. And look at this, she doesn't even have shoes on. She's forced to fill up all these buckets and carry them back and forth to her owner's home, sometimes five to six times a day. We should warn you, uh, some of the images you're going to see here may be disturbing to some people. It looks like you have a lot of... Um, track marks. Yeah. They are track marks. So what about when people say that these pills are only being swallowed and they're not being abused? What would you say to that? I say that's bullshit. I've done 19 in one day, one time. I've done stronger. I've done Oxy 80s, Dilaudid. OK, that's a Roxy 30, Roxycodone? A Roxycodone, 30 milligrams. I'm filling my needle up with water. I pour water on it. And the vein, and you push down. Don't waste anything. Where does everyone get these Roxies from? People who either go to pain management doctors and sell their scripts, or people who buy it from people who go to pain management doctors. People as young as middle school age are taking OxyContin, Roxycodone, Xanax. They're crushing them, snorting them, injecting them, just like cocaine or heroin. We decided to shoot this story in South Florida because this is the pain clinic capital of America. It's 
It's about five in the morning on a Sunday, and we've been driving up and down the streets of Broward County looking for pill users. And we found Amber just kind of hanging out in front of McDonald's, and we asked her if she was using pills. And unfortunately, the answer is yes. When did you start using pills? 14, 13, 14. That's so young. What kind of pills were you taking? Uh, Roxy's, uh, Xanax's, Oxy's. Well, one time when I was like 13, when I was in school, this, this girl had sold me a whole bunch, a whole bunch of Xanax bars for $20. I took them all in school and I almost died. Amber, how are you getting these pills? They're cheap. People get them prescribed, prescribe them, and then they just hand them out for two or three dollars. And why did you pick to just kind of sit here in, in this McDonald's? Because this is where I panhandle. It's pathetic, right? users from not only Florida but all over the East Coast drive down here to get their meds and just to see how bad the problem is all you need to do is pick up a copy of the local newspaper flip it over and you'll find 14 pages of pain clinic ads there are hundreds of them in Broward and Palm Beach counties so what I'm going to do is pick three of these clinics check myself in as a patient just to see what the heck's going on first thing you notice is the amount of security out there there's a